how are you Girl Scouts? I hope you are all still bearing the brunt of everything that has been going on. We know that the current situation has disrupted our sense of normalcy and we're all struggling in our own way. So the fact that you are here with me today truly means a lot. Thank you. This e-conference is part of our Juliet Law Seminar or JLS 100 Girls Project. In my case, the Paraluman Project where we aim to bring you girls opportunities to practice leadership and see ourselves as leaders by first arming you with increased awareness of what leadership is for WAGS or the World Association of Girl Guys and Girl Scouts, Gender Equality, and the Sustainable Development Goal 5. And I, your Ate Shalo, will give you an introduction to gender and the WAGS leadership model today. Let's get started. I'd like to request everyone's participation first. In the comment section below, please write your own understanding of gender and sex. Don't be pressured, just write the first thing that comes to your mind right now, okay? Cool. I want you to closely listen to our working definitions of these two things. Gender is based on social constructs and belief systems that are mostly relative to masculinity and femininity. The UN Women Training Center defines gender as the roles, behaviors, activities, and attributes that a given society at a given time considers appropriate for men and women. According to Sam Killerman's TED Talk, gender is relative and cultural. It isn't the parts that make up your body, it's what's in your head. On the other hand, sex is based on genetics. It's a biological concept based on biological characteristics, such as the difference in genitalia in a male and female. You may also be familiar with the fact that some people are intersex or have a difference of sexual development or DSD. Simply put, sex is the sum of biological characteristics that determine whether an individual is female, male, and or intersex. Though, as Mr. Killerman has said, Let's keep in mind that while biological sex is certainly a component of gender, it is not a determinant. Gender has now become a more complex concept, and since we have a lot to talk about today, allow me to just present this soja infographic from Flying Ketchup. Based on the same source, sex is assigned at the moment of birth. As individuals grow up, they develop their own sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression, or soj. One soji is a result of a complex interaction of environmental, cognitive, cultural, and biological factors. I hope that's clear and feel free to take a screenshot of this visual for your reference. Okay. Let's move on to the definitions of some gender-related words provided by the UN Women Training Center. Starting with gender identity. Persons deeply felt psychological identification as a man, woman, or other which may or may not correspond to the person's physiology or designated sex at birth. Like what you've seen in the previous infographic, it's basically a person's identification of their gender. Sexual orientation, on the other hand, is the capacity for profound emotional, affectional, and sexual attraction to, and intimate and sexual relations with, individuals of a different sex or gender, or the same sex or gender, or more than one sex or gender, who you are attracted to. Then there are gender norms. These are ideas about how men and women should look, be, and act. Norms refer to the accepted attributes and characteristics associated with each gender at a particular point in time for a specific society or community. They are the standards and expectations to which gender identity generally conforms within a range that defines a particular society, culture, and community at that point in time. Internalized early in life, gender norms can establish a life cycle of gender socialization and stereotyping. Having mentioned stereotyping, gender stereotypes are simplistic generalizations about the gender attributes, differences, and roles of women and men. These assumptions are not supported by science, but are part of how we are socialized to perform our gender roles as women and men. And gender roles are the different socially ascribed attitudes 
behaviors, work or responsibilities assigned to men and women, boys and girls, and third gender or transgender persons. At this point, we'll be talking about equality and equity. Before going into the context of gender, can you all share with me first your thoughts about the difference between equality and equity? Just your general idea. Kindly write them in the comment section. All right? Let's focus our eyes on this slide. In the first image, it is assumed that everyone will benefit from the same supports. They are being treated equally. In the second image, individuals are given different supports to make it possible for them to have equal access to the game. They are being treated equitably. In the third image, all three can see the game without any supports or accommodations because the cause of the inequity was addressed. The systemic barrier has been removed. Well, with that, hope the concept of equality versus equity was made clearer for you all. Gender equality, then, means that women and men have equal conditions, treatment, and opportunities for realizing their full potential, human rights, and dignity, and for contributing to and benefiting from economic, social, cultural, and political development. Gender equality is, therefore, the equal valuing of society of the similarities and differences of men and women and the roles they play. It is based on women and men being full partners in their home, community, and society. While gender equity, again, this is in the context of gender, is the process of being fair. To ensure fairness, special temporary measures may need to be taken to compensate for historical or systemic bias or discrimination. Gender equity is a means of achieving gender equality. Finally, when we talk about the empowerment of women, kindly keep in mind the following. It's about gaining power and control over their own lives, raising awareness, building self-confidence, expanding choices, increasing access to and control over resources, and working to transform structures and institutions. Should you have any further questions about these terms, don't hesitate to email me or simply add them to the forum that I will discuss later. Now that we've talked about these, uh, let's talk about WAGs and our definition of leadership. To just quickly give you a recap, the World Association of Girl Guys and Girl Scouts, or WAGS, is the largest voluntary movement dedicated to girls and young women in the world. Our diverse movement represents 10 million girls and young women from 150 countries. For more than 100 years, girl guiding and girl scouting have transformed the lives of girls and young women worldwide, supporting and empowering them to achieve their fullest potential and become responsible citizens of the world. We deliver our programs in five WAGS regions, Africa, Asia Pacific, Europe, Western Hemisphere, and Arab region. We also hold advocacy and leadership events at our five world centers, Ar Chalet in Switzerland, Sangam in India, Pax Lodge in the UK, Ar in Mexico, and Kusafiri, our world center traveling around Africa. Through our global programs, girls from all over the world come together to learn new skills, share their international experiences, and form lifelong friendships. And for WAGS, leadership is a shared journey that empowers us to work together and bring positive change to our lives, the lives of others, and our wider society. So, what's a good leader? A good leader is a lifelong learner who consciously deepens their understanding of different contexts, draws on different wisdoms, and uses that learning to collaborate with others to make a difference. By enabling girls and women to take the lead in their guiding and scouting journey from a very young age and to develop as role models for future generations of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts, we give them tools to become bold and confident women in every aspect of their lives. In a recent global survey by WAGS and the University of Exeter, we found that 46% of girls and women believe their gender 
could disadvantage them when seeking leadership opportunities. And only 37% feel that society supports female leaders. However, 88% feel that they're actively practicing leadership in girl guiding and girl scouting, which is a good thing. And 80% feel that it has given them the aspiration to make a difference in society. Bugs have worked with the University of Exeter to design a new leadership model that builds on over a century of learning about girls' and women's journeys into a leadership. The WAGS leadership model is based on the five minds of a manager model developed by Henry Mitzberg and Jonathan Gosling. It is an adaptation of this well-evidenced and internationally effective leadership model to fit the specific responsibility of delivering the WAGS mission, which is to enable girls and young women to develop their fullest potential as responsible citizens of the world. Our new leadership model is a model of leadership practice. Leadership practice is the daily behaviors you choose to engage in to put your values into action and create positive change. Leadership practice regards your ways of being and thinking about your world as the foundation to who you are as a leader. The best way to work on this foundation is by consciously and actively practicing leadership. We believe that leadership is a whole person process. Everyone can develop their leadership practice in everyday life. Anyone, whatever their age, position, or situation, can be more conscious about how they practice leadership. We should give everyone tools to see themselves as leaders and reflect on their leadership practice. We need to make time and space to practice leadership if we want to be better leaders. Holding a position of power doesn't automatically make us leaders. Girls can develop their leadership at all ages, and it is part of the responsibility of the adults who support them to create spaces for them to practice. And our values and behaviors affect who we are as a leader more than the skills we learn. The WAG's leadership model uses a system of six mindsets as the main tool to make leadership practice conscious. Each mindset is like a window that we can look through to get different perspectives and to consciously influence our reactions, reflections, choices, and behavior. By using the six leadership mindsets as tools to draw meaning from our experiences, we become more aware of our leadership practice and we can internalize leadership behaviors until they become a habit, part of who we are as leaders. By consciously practicing the leadership mindsets, we get into the habit of taking different aspects of context into account in any situation. As a result, we adjust our choices and actions. Over time, as we keep practicing the six mindsets in different roles and situations, they become a part of us and our leadership changes for the better. The relevance of each mindset will change according to the situation, and we can draw on different mindsets or combinations of mindsets at different times. The leadership mindsets grow with us as we deepen our understanding of the model through practice. Developing our leadership is a lifelong journey, which is why we believe it happens through experiences in the theoretical course. To start developing your leadership practice, try answering these questions. How shall I make space to reflect on how I've used the mindsets each day? What core values are most important to me and what is a behavior that can help me demonstrate these values? What one change in my behavior will help me empower others more? What is one behavior that always motivates and energizes me? How can I put myself in another person's shoes right now. This whole JLSE conference is dedicated to looking into the WAGS leadership mindsets, so there will be a session for each mindset to ensure that you can all grasp everything well. Since this session is only an introduction, which is largely based on the leadership model handbook by WAGS, I'll be only giving brief descriptions for each mindset as an overview. Okay, let's start with the reflective mindset. It's about leading yourself. You draw meaning from your past experiences and think about your behavior and its impact. 
for your values and how to be true to them when you practice leadership. Cultivate curiosity. Hold space for learning about and caring for yourself and recognize and create the conditions you need to thrive. Next is leading relationships. We have collaborative mindset for this as you bring together different perspectives and inspire consensus around a shared vision. Listen to and learn from others. Share what you know freely. Create the structures, conditions, and attitudes people need to reach their potential and contribute fully to any team or situation. When you want to lead for innovation, you'll employ the creative and critical thinking mindset, where you'll create an environment where both innovation and inquiry are valued. You have to seek data, analyze and learn from information and evidence. Look out for assumptions and challenge them. Encourage yourself and others to innovate. Seek new ideas and be open to changing your mind. Of course, there's leading for girls empowerment and we always use this mindset the gender equality mindset where we take gender into account when practicing leadership and challenge gender stereotypes. We should understand the impact of gender barriers and empower ourselves and others to recognize and overcome them. It's how we champion the value of being a girl-led movement. How about when we get inside the worlds of others, understand their needs and concerns more deeply? To do this, we should be leading in context. And we use the worldly mindset where we observe, ask questions, and educate ourselves on local conditions and perspectives. We strive to build meaningful connections with others through inclusive opportunities for shared leadership. Lastly, living for impact. Equating to responsible action mindset, we mobilize energy around what needs changing and what needs to be protected. We transform our values into action with authenticity. We practice leadership to create a world where all girls are valued and can reach their potential as responsible citizens of the world. And that's it! Our six leadership mindsets. Before officially wrapping up our session, you all have an assignment. <laughs> Please listen carefully. Your take-home activity is called Leading Life as a Girl. You need to create a timeline of your life with five to ten leadership decisions or positions you've had. Make sure there's enough space around each decision. Using a blue pen, write below each decision the mindset that you think your decision falls under. Think about the comments or reactions of other people to those decisions. Color supportive ones differently from critical ones. Mark the ones that you feel you received because of your gender with the female sign. Just like what you're saying right now. After completing your timeline, reflect whether you feel you would have made different choices if you were of a different gender and if you've encountered any limitations due to your gender. And take a photo of your timeline and post it publicly on Facebook and Twitter with the hashtags GSP Empowers and Girl Leads. On Twitter, tag Girl Scouts PH and at Shella, that's me, so that we can monitor our outputs. Put your reflection in the caption. You may refer to the example shown on screen. The deadline for your take-home activity is on September 19 at 10 p.m. All right, I hope everything is clear. You can take a screenshot of this example also. Cool. Lastly, this is a must, okay? You need to answer these two questions. Why is leadership practice important? And give at least two examples on how you can use the WAGS leadership model in your daily life. You'll have to write it in your learning journal with a maximum of five sentences per question. Again, you need to write your answers in your learning journal, which you'll know about in the next episode with your Anna Justine, so you better stay tuned. Anyway, if you're wondering about the photo that's us in front of the Radio City Music Hall in New York, when we were given time to roam around after a busy day during the Juliet Lowe seminar, everyone's a Girl Scout and Girl Guide leader in their respective countries. Good memory. And you may have also already noticed by now 
the J form attached in the description below. Well, I think you all guessed right. It's the post evaluation form. We highly value your feedback and this will prove your participation in the session as well. I'll personally check your answers to also see if you've learned a thing or two. Hope you did. This form must be accomplished in 45 minutes from now. At 3.45 p.m. sharp, we'll be closing the form. Please answer honestly so we'll know our points of improvement as well. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, just write it in the feedback form attached. And if you have any thoughts about today's session, feel free to write them in the comment section below. And that's the end of our session today. Thanks everyone for your time. Take care.